Shalom and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Reynard Bonove. This is the man in Christ show. It's always a pleasure to meet with you on this platform as we bring the word of the Lord. And before we start, let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this great opportunity and a privilege you have granted unto us that we may look into your word. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will open our eyes of understanding. We surrender to the authority of your word. We surrender to the leading of the Holy Spirit, O oh King of glory. Help us to know the things that you have prepared for us this day. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Welcome one more time, and we'll get straight into the scriptures. We'll start with our main scripture that gives as the name of this show in the book of second corinthians chapter number five and verse number 17 says therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new if anyone when you read the old king james version says if any man is in christ if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And we have been saying that it is important for us to behold and to look at the things that Jesus has done unto us. Because that is the instruction that we get from this scripture. And we have been focusing on the book of Ephesians. We are still in chapter number one, whereby Apostle Paul writing to the church at Ephesus says that he, uh, Christ has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. When you read at verse number three, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And then Apostle Paul continues to explain what he means by the spiritual blessing he leads them and he, uh, verse 4 he says just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us to adoption as sons by jesus christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he has made us accepted in the beloved he says in verse 7 in him or in christ we have redemption through his blood then he explains that it means the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace this is what we would like to look at today we have looked at redemption through the blood of jesus then we need to dwell further on the forgiveness of sins on the forgiveness of sins now where there is forgiveness where, where there is uh, the forgiveness of sins as brought to us by the scriptures we need to realize that one there is the offender there is the one who has committed the sins then there is the one who has the power to forgive in this case god there is the offender and this is man through adam as well and there is the one who has been offended and has the power to forgive this is god we need to look at the readiness of our god to forgive we need to look at the readiness of our god to forgive because remember god is loving and god is merciful whenever god deals with us he does not deal with us based on our actions but he has dealt with us according to his love he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son unto us this is an act of love and we'll get into the scriptures and see how god treats us even though we have sinned against him but then you will see that god has always been ready to forgive us we'll start with the book of psalms psalm 86 and verse number five he says for you lord are good and ready to forgive god is good and god is ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon him he is abundant he is rich in mercy but then 
he is ready he is always ready to forgive and he is filled with mercy towards them all who call upon his name the lord is ready to forgive us so any time then someone sins should always bear in mind that i have got a father who is ready to forgive me i have got a father who is ready to deal with my sins through forgiveness again look at the same book chapter 130 verse 3 if you lord should mark iniquities o oh lord who could stand if the lord would mark iniquities we will use interchangeably these words iniquity sin transgression but we shall explain them before the end of the show but the psalmist here says if the lord should mark iniquities o oh lord who could stand but there is forgiveness with you verse 4 but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared if the lord was so keen in exposing your iniquities and your sins and recording them against you the psalm says it is not possible for any man to stand before god it would be impossible for any one of us to stand before god but then he is ready to forgive us he says there is forgiveness with god there is forgiveness with god he does not wait for us to ask for him to do anything that he wants to ask i will guard you even though you have not known me i will forgive you i am ready to forgive you there is forgiveness in our god and god has guarded us in the area of sins in that when we were dead in our trespasses he sent out his son he sent us his son to come and die for us on the cross this is the lord our god he is god besides him there's no one and he has guarded us even against sin even against sin in that him reacting to us or him sending help to us on the issue of sin so that he might forgive us it was not as a result of our request to him it was not as a result of prayer to him when we didn't know about him when we didn't know about forgiveness when we didn't know about his love and his mercies god when we were still dead in our trespasses he sent out his son we'll be able to look at that but he sent out his son unto us that he might die for us and thereby obtaining for us forgiveness look at the same book as 55 verse 7 he says let the wicked forsake his way this is the advice or this is the instruction of god to us let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts let the wicked forsake let him not walk in his old ways and let the unrighteous man forsake his thoughts let him return to the lord let him return to the lord remember we came from the lord we came from the lord so when he's saying we return to him he's reminding us that that is where we belong that is where we belong man came from god and man should always be in union with god and so what is his instruction to to the to the wicked man forsake your ways forsake your thoughts return to the lord why because he is ready to forgive he is always ready to receive us he is always ready to embrace us so he says uh, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts let him return to the lord and he will have mercy on him and to our god for he will abundantly pardon the lord he will abundantly he will abundantly pardon the wicked man this is how god treats us this is how god is calling us unto forgiveness forsake your ways they are not good ways forsake them why god is waiting for you on the other end to receive you to embrace you to forgive you he says he is the lord he is the lord he is ready to guard us he is ready to forgive us and then he calls us to have a change of mind a change of thoughts this is the repentance this is the repentance he's calling us unto that we forsake our ways that we follow him and he will abundantly richly he will abundantly pardon us look at first timothy chapter number 
verse number number four that God desires or who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. This is the desire of God. Remember in Isaiah, it tells the wicked man to forsake his ways and his thoughts. But then here, Apostle Paul tells us what is the desire of God towards men. He desires that all men, regardless of their race, regardless of their tongue, regardless of whom they are, their status in the society, the desire that is in the heart of God is that all men will be saved and they will come to the knowledge of the truth. That they will be saved and they will come to the knowledge of the truth. All men will be saved and they will come to the knowledge of the truth. Why is it so? Because God is moved with love for us. God is moved with his great love for us. And he wants us, he wants us to know him as the savior he wants us to look at him as one who wants to forgive us even though sometimes we have put our hearts away from him but god has never stopped calling us back to himself he has never stopped calling us back to himself and he is ready remember where we start in the book of psalm he is ready to forgive he is ready to forgive this is the instruction that he gave to ezekiel the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 2 and verse 3, said, And he said to me, son of, man, son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. He is sending Ezekiel to the people that have rebelled against him. God is long-suffering. God is long-suffering. He is sending Ezekiel to the people. He says even their fathers, they rebelled him, they rebelled against him to this very day. But then he is send, sending Ezekiel to the same people. I am sending you to them. They are rebellious, but then I still want you to let them know that I need them to have a change of their minds, to repent of their wicked ways, and to turn unto me. So this is what the Lord is telling us, that he is ready, ready to receive us. He is ready to forgive us. Then, that in Ezekiel, he has talked of this word rebellion. And rebellion is just a transgression. We have transgressed or they have transgressed against the word of God, against the laws and against the instruction of God. God is ready to forgive them concerning that. You will also look at the word iniquity. It will also appear uh, much as we, as we look into this. And iniquity, this is just the, the bending and the twisting of, of the instructions of God and of the ways of God that you do not want to follow what God has laid before you, but you want to walk in iniquity. He has told us that the wicked man returned from his iniquity. Then there is the word sin that will also occur again anytime we are talking of forgiveness. And to sin just means to miss the mark. To, to come below the standard. The, 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 the sin means to go wrong and it has the implication of incurring duty. But in all these things, God is ready to forgive because God is merciful and God is loving. Look at, look at Exodus 34. Verse 6, he says, And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. This is the character of God. This is how God. Uh, uh, this is how God relates with us. Out of His mercy, out of His grace, out of His long-suffering character, He says, abounding in goodness and in truth. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious. Anytime we are dealing with the forgiveness of sin, we cannot forget this thing of the mercies of God, of the grace of God, of the love of God towards the sinner, of the love of God, 
of how God has been long suffering towards us. Remember what he has told Ezekiel, I'm sending you to the same rebellious people. Their fathers were rebellious. I'm sending you back again to them. This is long suffering on the side of God. He says, abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, forgiving iniquity and transgression and and sin. This is the character of God. No one today has got a reason to continue in sin. Why? You only need to look at God. He is ready to forgive you. You only need to look at God. God has been patient with you. God has given you countless opportunities to change your mind. And this is also another opportunity he is giving you today that God is ready to forgive. He is abundant in mercy. Abandoned in love, in grace, in goodness, he is long suffering. So the Lord is ready. The Lord is ready. But then now, after realizing that he is ready to forgive, then we need to look at the means of forgiveness. The means of forgiveness. This, remember, Apostle Paul says in the book of Ephesians, chapter number one, that this is a spiritual gift. So forgiveness has to be given. It has to be given. It has to be given to the offender or to the sinner by God. That means you cannot forgive yourself. You cannot save yourself. There is nothing you can do to make yourself right with God. You can only but receive the forgiveness of the Lord. You can only but receive. If it were so, if it were possible for man to forgive himself, for man to take away his sin or to wash away his sins, then there would be no need for Jesus to die on the cross. But because he is the only means, he is the only means, we have to believe in him. So the means of forgiveness is the blood that has been shed on behalf of man, the blood of Jesus Christ. Look at Colossians chapter number one. The book of Colossians chapter number one. Number 13, he says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness, or God has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. There has been a shift and a transfer. You have been delivered uh, from the power of darkness, conveyed to the kingdom of the son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So when he talks of redemption, we talked about it the other day, when he talks of redemption, then he also means the forgiveness of sins. When it comes to the forgiveness of sins, there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. So we have redemption through his blood. Through his blood, even from the times of the law, this was the pattern. We shall see that shortly, but this was the pattern. The redemption that we have is through the blood of Jesus Christ. This is what brings the forgiveness of sins. This is what brings the, forg the forgiveness of sins. So it is only through Jesus it is only through Jesus, through his blood, that now we can claim to have our sins cleansed. That we can claim to be having our sins cleansed by God. Without that, it is not possible. Look at Titus, the book of Titus, chapter number 2. Let's start from verse number 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. We have said that God is gracious and out of his grace, out of the riches of his grace, the grace that brings salvation. Salvation is as a result of grace. That means it is not your work. You can only receive. This is the reason why you are saying you cannot forgive yourself. You cannot pardon yourself. You have to be pardoned. You have to be forgiven. And this is only by the grace of God. Now, that grace that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Has appeared to all men. 
Remember first Timothy chapter number 2 that God desires that all men may be saved. This is the desire of God that all men should be saved. So because that is the desire of God, then he has availed his grace to all men. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. That grace is not a ticket for wayward living. The instruction of the Lord is still very clear. Let the wicked man turn from his iniquity. The grace of God that brings salvation when you believe in that grace and walk in that grace, that grace is a teacher. And it teaches us that we deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. We live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Then 14, he says, who gave himself for us. Jesus gave himself for us. Where? On the cross. He did not have to die, but he gave himself for us. There is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. It was important, it was mandatory for Jesus to give himself for us. If a tall man would be acquitted of his sins. He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed. He might redeem us. He might buy us out of every lawless deed. Redemption, the other day we saw it is a, a market word. It is a market word. It also means uh, buying from. So he redeemed us or he bought us from. He delivered us from every lawless deed. Every one of them, every lawless deed, and to purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. He redeemed us from every lawless deed, and that blood washed us. It purified us. He washed us. He purified for himself. He purified for himself his own special people. He was doing this for himself. For himself. It was not an instruction from another. It was for himself. It was his will. It was his decision. It was his decision. He was not doing this as a result of answering a man's prayer. We didn't know about deliverance. We didn't know about redemption. It is him who brought it unto us. It is him who showed us his love. It is him who showed us his grace. And he redeemed us from every lawless deed and purified us for himself. So the redeemed man, the forgiven man must live for him. Must live for him. Not for yourself. Not for your own self. There is one who has purchased you. There is one who has redeemed you. You now have a new master. You now have a new Lord. It is not sin. You were once under sin, but then Christ redeemed you out of all that. He purified you. He washed you out of that state that you were in for himself. Uh, and it was for, and and we should be zealous for good works. So this is the mind of God for us. This is the plan of God for us. Without the blood of Jesus, man cannot stand before God and be counted totally righteous. There was a reminder everywhere that they are still sin. So what is it that used to happen? It was only a transaction that could last one year. The high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies with blood. And that blood was only supposed to cover their sins for one year. To cover their sins. Not to take away their sins. Jesus is not covering our sins. Jesus has taken away. Jesus has washed away our sins. And he will not remember them anymore. 
Once he has washed them out, there is no remembrance. There is no reminder like it used to happen in the Old Testament. It is not happening in the New Testament. Why? The blood of Jesus is not doing a half a job. It is totally, completely washing away, making you, the receiver, perfect. And we are going to take a short break. And when we come, we will start from there. That the blood of Jesus has perfected you completely, perfectly. You are complete in what Christ has done. Amen. <laughs>